You think with how staunch Republicans are about guns, they would be against Biden being charged for buying guns just because he uses substances? It's pretty funny uh, how right-wingers always scream gun rights should not be infringed, then support something like this, which would be considered an infringement upon a person's ability to buy a gun and their rights to guns. Hunter Biden could face up to 25 years in prison if convicted on three felony gun charges. Well, 25 years just for using substances and lying about it. But nobody ever gets charged for lying about using alcohol while attempting to buy a gun. Four-page indictment released Thursday accuses President Biden's son of lying about being a drug user when attempting to purchase a firearm, which he ultimately did obtain. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes reports. We've climbed out of our great economic crisis. This is what the president had hoped to focus on this week, a surging economy under his watch. But then his son's indictment took center stage. Should Hunter get a pardon, Mr. President? With Hunter Biden facing felony charges, it is now a near certainty that the case will vie for headlines through Election Day. So will the impeachment inquiry launched by House Republicans this week. An impeachment inquiry that has no evidence to back it, it's going to be a pointless thing. It's just right-wingers trying to get their revenge on Biden for what happened to Trump and Trump committing crimes. These allegations paint a picture of a culture of corruption. Democrats, sensing a new phase, have stepped up. Well, McCarthy talking about a, a culture of corruption when some of the most corrupt people are the ones he protects. Their defense. There is not a shred of evidence that President Biden committed an impeachable offense. But those aren't the only headwinds he's facing. A new report this week showed inflation inching back up. And polls consistently suggest Americans have concerns about Mr. Biden's age. Yeah, Biden is too old to serve. We don't need 60 and 70 year olds serving as president. Uh, the maximum age should be 50. Absolutely legitimate concern. And the presence, he's not a job for someone that's 80 years old. It's all catnip for his opponents. How does the president plan to convince the American people over the next year that 80 is not too old for someone who's running for re-election? 80 is the new 40, didn't you hear? No, 80 is not the new 40. That type of BS doesn't make any sense anyways. Um, look, what I can speak to is what this president has done, right? I can speak to his experience. I can speak to the wisdom that he has. I can speak to his record. One person who does not appear to be phased by the president's age is his likely rival, Donald Trump, who said in an interview this week that 80 is not too old to be president. That Trump is only saying that because he is almost as old as Biden himself. Could be, because at 77, Trump himself would turn 80 while in office if he returns to the White House. Catherine? Nancy Cordes, thank you for your reporting. For more, let's bring in Brandon Beck. He's an assistant professor at Texas Tech University School of Law and a former assistant public defender. Brandon, Hunter Biden's lawyer has gone on the offensive, so let's break down the legal strategy. First, they say the deal on the gun charge that was reached in July is still valid, but prosecutors say it was never executed. Who's right? I think the prosecutors are actually right on this one. Um, when you take a, something like a plea agreement or some other agreement a defendant has with the government to the judge, it's not binding on the parties typically unless the judge accepts it. Here the judge rejected it, so neither party should be bound by that agreement. And also, according to the court filings, the probation officer did not sign off on it either. So separately, is there a legitimate constitutional question here about drug users owning guns? There's an enormous constitutional question. I think it's bigger than most people are even realizing. Uh, the Fifth Circuit, in a recent case called United States versus Daniels, held that this count three, this gun charge, was unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. Of course, the third. Well, yeah, the Second Amendment doesn't say people have the right to bear arms, 
unless they smoke weed or something. It just says people have the right to bear arms. Circuit where Hunter Biden is going to be appealing um, if he's convicted of this charge hasn't reached that same conclusion yet. But I think the courts are taking a close look at what the Fifth Circuit is doing, which in my view is a faithful application of the Second Amendment. Also during the plea hearing in July, the judge pressed Hunter Biden on when he got sober. And I have the transcript here. And Judge Norica said, when was the last time you used, ingested, or were under the influence of any drug, legal or illegal medication or alcoholic beverage of any kind? And Hunter Biden, who's here on the transcript as a defendant, said, June of 2019, Your Honor. And of course, that timing is important because it's alleged that he was an unlawful drug user during 2018, right? But his lawyers are now questioning the facts surrounding that incident. Well, it becomes more of a fact-intensive question because drug use is not a continuing offense. You're not a drug user from the first time you try drugs until you get sober. There might be periods of time anywhere in between a, a long span of time where a person is addicted to drugs, is doing, doing drugs, but then there are other intervals where they're not. And one of the other difficulties with this law is that the, the law is very vague in terms of its definition of what it means by drug user or unlawful drug user. Could it be someone that has an Adderall pill to go study for school and only uses it during finals? Or are we envisioning a situation where a person is kind of strung out on drugs while they're actually possessing a firearm? So just to bottom line it, it sounds like Hunter Biden's legal team has a pretty good legal position on this constitutional question and then also this legal definition of what, in fact, an unlawful drug user is. If Biden, if Hunter Biden uh, gets his charges dropped based upon that, right-wingers are going to flip their lids and probably try to double down on drug users buying guns and making it even harder. I think that's certainly true, and they need to be litigating that at the district court level. Uh, the more difficult question is the other two charges, which are effectively lying charges, lying on a government form when trying to get the firearm. I think the more interesting legal question is if the gun charge is indeed unconstitutional, count three, does that make the lying charges also not valid charges because then the lie would no longer be material if we're dealing with something that should never have even been a law? Um, a lot of legal research to do there, but a very interesting question that they'll also have to answer. Brandon Beck, thank you for your legal analysis.